There are all different levels of success. And we all have to think that it's the same old expression, the grass always seems greener on the other side. And you know, I feel that I've been quite successful. Did I become Ralph Lauren? No, but that's okay. Someone's always going to be taller, thinner, richer, prettier. You know, there's, you make yourself crazy, so you have to deal with that. But my story is actually very much a, a little bit of the American dream, and I didn't know that it was going on until I talk about it and look back. I had all these fashion interviews, and one of them was a fur company. And I went there, and the ad said, designer, sales, shipping, designer, sales, shipping, office. I said, oh, this is a company. They're starting out. They've been around, and they're redoing and hiring all these new people. So I go to apply, and I had on a beige, it was the spring, I had a beige Armani suit on with a brown stripe. I can remember the double breast. I can remember like it was yesterday. I walk in, and he had a son who was my age who wasn't, he was, had taken a bad left turn. So he was always in trouble and partying and all of that. And I was like, more like, good morning, eager. And he said, I'm going to hire you. I didn't realize when he hired me that that job description was not for different jobs. That was for one person to do Walmart's job. <laughs> and my big success there was we were selling at that time to the Japanese market and they were buying a very small little mink black jacket and they wanted something more interesting. And I said, you know, Mr. Fishman, we buy two Hermes scarves. Two Hermes scarves will fit inside the jacket and we can have Hermes line jackets and the Japanese are going to go crazy for this. And it's totally legal because we're buying them retail and we're just we start to do it. The girl and her man, they're on commission. I was like the king. I was buying two. They were calling me. We have more scarves than within. They, they knew we needed two, two, two. This was the biggest success possible that we were able to create this and have these scarves and in the Japanese market. They just, they just couldn't believe this. We go that night to pick up the furs, always from the same guy, Jimmy, who had a showroom in front of his factory. I say it's smaller than most of the women that we sell to their dressing rooms. That's how small. He said, do you know anybody who wants to buy, who wants to rent this showroom? I said, James said, we do. I said, we do? He says, let's go into business. He said, I want $200 a month. I said, how are you? He said, listen, this is an environment where everybody in the fur industry, the owners are basically mature Jewish men who, thank you, who sons don't really want to do what their father was doing, like I didn't want to do what my father was doing. And we're young, we're fun. We're attractive. We're like totally different than everybody else here. Let's, and let's portray that we're both Italian American and let's use that as a, as part of our picture, as part of our, our, our game plan. So, slowly, this was in June, May, June, I went to my parents and I said, this is what we're going to do, and I like, I need to, you know, I left some of my money now. <laughs> I don't want to waste it, your God, can I have some of it now? I want to be able to do this. And they were very helpful. Not free-free, but carefully helpful. My father actually thought that whatever he was giving us was really buying all the furs and building, the, building this. He didn't realize that all the money that he was giving, we were using for one thing, and that was for the big fashion show that we were going to have. Originally, when I was started, I was doing everything. And then I realized that it's not possible, actually, to be the creative individual and the business part if you want to grow, if you want to expand, if you want to expand in a large way. I mean, 
you know, I'm not the guy to come to, to negotiate the lease, but I'm the guy who's going to fill the store with all the celebrities and all the clients. So I found that, you know, what I got involved, excuse me, <coughs> some wonderful partners who were able, who don't want to be in the front, who don't want to shake the hands, who don't want to go out at night, who's the last thing they want to do, and are the other backbone of the company, I think, to grow. It's the only way that it's possible. You need teamwork is very important. The idea that to do something, you could do something on individually, on your own, smaller, but to really be able to grow, you have to totally be able to have the vision to also give up. You know, I'm a little bit of a micromanager. And what happens even now, all of a sudden, I'm like jumping in on something and like causing more confusion that's not really my area and it's already like been done already. And that only makes things worse, you know. You have to be able to like allocate it and walk away. You know, when that's very, you know, a friend of mine, years ago when we were hiring people, it's an interesting thing. He's a very successful guy in um, the accessories business. And we would be hiring people, and I would say, okay, we found someone, and we were able to get them. We really got them for the lowest price possible. And he said, you know, that is so really the most incorrect thing to do. He said, if you want to have a successful business, you want to hire the person who wants the most amount of money. Because A, they're going to perform that way. They're used to making money. So they want to keep their job, and they're going to do a better job. The person that you squeeze down to the lowest price possible is going to be the first one out the door at night. It's really not going to have that pride. And you want to always look for somebody who's of the highest level, because that's how you want to represent your customer and your company and how you want to do it. So we're open. Come on in. Come on in. Of course we're open. casual girls to look like that coming and shopping. And in a situation like a store like this, you would think that that's not the customer. There is no profiling today. Everybody's the customer. You just, uh, it's, it's so interesting. It doesn't, everybody looks different. Everybody appears different. You don't know what people, it's, it's, a, it's something that I actually learned the hard way through the years of realizing that People have different looks and different styles, and you can't, you know, you would think, well, these are three kids, you know, you never know. I had been fortunate enough to have sold to so many celebrities, you know, the celebrity, I mean, we were, we have a very big celebrity clientele, from Denzel Washington's wife to Naomi Campbell was the face of our company. I mean, it goes on and on from the older girls, Elizabeth Taylor, I mean, all, over the years, I mean, we just span all different kinds, and we do movies and all of this. So an agent came to me and said, you know, there's something very new that's out there. It's television selling. And there's a TV show called QVC, and you may have the right to really get things. And we said, yeah, I'll let's try this out. Let's go down. So anyway, we had a meeting. I went down there, and I created a faux fur collection for QVC, things that retail from $50 to $150. And I, at that time, in December 7th, 17 years ago, on a Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, I went on and had the most successful accessory show that QVC to that date had. We sold $350,000 in one hour. And so to be able, for me, to balance this and that has been a very interesting achievement. Often that doesn't happen. Why I think this works well is that the price point is not close. It's not like this is $500 and that's 100 That's 80 and this is $22,000. So it's, 
there's no mistaking. It's two different worlds, but we mm -hmm. based it on colliding it that it's the same designer. It's the, the most important thing I always think is that you need to speak to everyone. Share your idea because you never know where that other idea is coming from. Or someone says, you know what, I like that idea that you're doing. Maybe we could do something together. Maybe we should try this. Maybe we... And you have to be open, I think. And that's the, I think that's, that's the key. And I slowly grew this from a tiny showroom to we're here. We have a, we, I wanted us to go there, but we there. we're under construction to a, um, a, a, um, 35,000 square foot warehouse and manufacturing facility in Long Island City. We have a boutique in Aspen, a boutique in Chicago. We have a store in store in Harrods in London. And next week I'm going to Russia. We're opening up a store. We have a, a boutique within Zoom. Zoom is like their Bergdorf Goodman. So, but should we go? Shouldn't we go? Everything is always. A little bit of element of risk, of course. It's that it, that, but it's the only way to move forward. And I think the idea is to try to be as original as possible. I feel that my journey hasn't really even begun to wind down. People who love what they're doing and who are successful work really till the end. And maybe it's a little different. Maybe you're not working as many hours. Maybe, but do you know my friend Joan Rivers? Do you know who that is? The comedian. She's, very, she's a great friend of mine. She says, you know, in show business, nobody retires. You know what retires means? Nobody wants to hire you. <laughs> Everybody get out.